Uh, Mike, how much was Zach able to do yesterday? Um, he was able to do enough for, you know, we feel good, you know, so I know Salah, uh, you know, updated you guys yesterday that he was limited, um, but we feel good and, uh, you know, we're just taking the, the necessary precautions to make sure he feels really, really good every single day. What did you see from him in the fourth quarter, Mike? Um, him and the rest of the gr- group, just resilience, you know, to, um, to to put together those two drives in the fourth quarter it says a lot about those guys. It says a lot about him as a leader, how much he's uh, just continuing to, to grow and grow and mature. He was last year um, in terms of just being a leader. But, you know, it's all through experience. It's just going to continue to get better and better. And, uh, you know, for him to, um, to to lead that group and those guys to go out and, and make the plays when uh, we needed them to, uh, I wish we wouldn't have been put in that position, you know. Um, and uh, i got to do a better job of making sure that doesn't happen. But those guys took over in the fourth quarter and made a lot of plays. When you look at uh, what happened in the first three quarters with Zach particularly, and obviously it was a whole offense, but... Uh... What, what clicked? What was what clicked when you look at? Yeah, I mean, again, it's not, yeah, not not just Jack, uh, Zach, but the entire offense. Again, you know, I think uh, you know, I, first and foremost, uh, myself and the other coaches got to put these guys in better position to be successful. Um, and uh, not only just that, not play calling, whatever. I mean, that is what it is. But um, from from an execution standpoint, you guys have heard me say that before, and that's just true to my core. Like when when guys aren't executing uh, to their capabilities, that's on coaching, and uh, so we got to get that fixed. And uh, you know, uh, luckily our guys uh, pulled through some of that, and uh, in the fourth quarter, really came through, and um, you know, did a great job. Obviously, was, was there a play or a moment in that fourth quarter that stands out as something that you can see, like all right, Zach, maybe as a rookie, doesn't think to make that play? Or, you know what I mean? Like, like you can see the progress. It's um. I don't want to dive too far into that, but but there's because that I, I could take about ten minutes to answer that question. And I, there was a s- sequence of plays, not even in the fourth quarter, but uh, uh, the last third down in the third quarter, uh, where we got a certain type of coverage on third and ten. The ball got checked down, and uh, we got those same exact coverages with similar concepts that we were running against it and for him to learn off that one in the third quarter um, Rob Calabrese him the other quarterbacks Joe Mike Strev uh, you know just communicate down on the sidelines and then be able to come through in those two drives against you know like I said similar coverages where Mike Mika Fitzpatrick is basically sitting right in there between the hashes um, we have receivers running right at him and, and Zach you know to um uh, just feel space and get the ball where it needed to go. It was it was really cool. It's an awesome sequence. I'd love to sit down and watch film with you guys on. Um, you know, but it was really cool for him and and uh, and obviously the rest of the guys. You really spoke about poise for a quarterback. How much poise did he show you, especially in that environment? Yeah, a lot, you know, and I think he showed it uh, toward the back half of last year when he started getting more comfortable. But he was, you know, again, I'm I'm up in the box, so I don't get to look in guys' eyes. But but um, not just hearing it from the coaches, but hearing it from his teammates, just how he was in the huddle and all that. It's just um, it's just it's it's uh, it's good, you know. It was cool. So um, you know, not to be uh, not expected because that's that's what he shows every single day, um, you know. And I know when when that fourth quarter hit. Um, and that music started going, and uh, you know, you kind of know what that means when you're, when you're going into Pittsburgh. And I don't think our guys flinched on either side of the ball. And luckily, it was close enough where we were able to, you know, just get the two drives. Our defense did a tremendous job of forcing the four turnovers throughout the day, keep giving us ops, and um, our guys you know, made the most of it in the fourth quarter. Like on those two drives, they didn't go smoothly, like on schedule. I think you lost a couple yards with Brees a couple times, penalties at the goal line. Yep. Corey penalty made it first and twenty. Did that show you something kind of progression-wise that you guys as an offense were able to overcome? Those yeah, I mean, any you know, that's those are drive killers in the league, right? And that's what as 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 a young group, uh, a lot of young guys again, they're 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 so used to when it doesn't work in a drive in college football. Hey, I'll get I'll get the ball back in four minutes, and we'll go six plays, eighty yards, and score in a minute and a half, and it doesn't really matter anyways. Um, and in, in this league, those are those are absolute detriment, right? Being in third and long because of self uh, inflicted wounds. So that's the first and foremost. We got to get that stuff corrected. And again, that goes on coaching first, and, and the players got to follow suit. But to answer your question, for them to um, you know be in some of those situations, come through, whether it be Zach, whether it be our protection holding up, whether it be receivers separating, all the things that need to be uh, get done to execute in, in those times, uh, those players did, and uh, you know, really proud of them. Mike, what is the secret to um, Zach and your offense being what they were in the fourth quarter as you move forward and, and are there things that you did learn on Sunday um, 
do to help you go forward? Um, I don't think there's any secret. I mean, each week is going to be its own own deal. You know, every every game's different. Every defense you're going to, uh, up against is different. Your matchups, what we feel is going to be our best best matchups, are going to be different. So, you know, you, you gotta you gotta take what you learned and, and all the all the non schematic stuff that that we that we took from that game and the players took from that game. You got to put that in the bank and learn from it uh, and continue to grow off of it. But again, every week's going to be a little bit different. Um, I just again, I I, I know that uh, not just from some Sunday, not just from even the Cleveland game, but it is a resilient group. And, um, you know, even going back to the Cincinnati game, we're, um, you know, we, we, we felt like we had a lot of opportunities there, uh, you know, to, to get ourselves back in the game, not put ourselves in that position. Again, we got to get that correct as coaches. But again, I think the players never, never lost belief in that game. Obviously, they didn't in Pittsburgh, and uh, we got to take that with us. In terms of pocket presence, it seemed like he was maybe feeling the pressure better, his, his feet were like more. St- you know, sat in the pocket, and when he did, you know, escape, he kind of knew where to go. What did you see in terms of like him feeling the pressure and, and staying in the in the pocket? And- yeah, no, I, I agree with you on that. I mean, he. Um- you know, again, just him being able to study his film from a year ago, where the where the soft spots are, and you'd think it's just going to continue to get better. Again, guys, I mean, he was he hadn't practiced since you know two days before the Philly game and got what nine plays or whatever it was in the Philly with four throws, and so to to be able to um, you know go in there and. Um, you know, feel the pocket like he did and have, have some of the presence that he did. And, and then also when it was breaking down for whatever reason, whether it be bad play call, whether it be, a, you know, a missed assignment, whether it be, you know, just a, uh, you know, a defensive player making a play, I thought he did a good job of escaping. Um, some were uh, a, a little bit scarier than others for me up top in terms of just like get the ball out, you know. Uh, but we also had some opportunities to make some plays, you know. Uh, he got the one to Corey right there on the sideline, um, you know, and, and, and we, we got to be able to come uh, through with that play. Uh, and then he had another the one that I know he wants uh, back, uh, the one that we were at the 10-yard line, he threw down the field to Brees. You know, those are the plays that can really change games when it does go off schedule because, yeah, I'd, I'd love to sit here and, and say everything's going to be clean, but at the same time, it's football. There's a lot of variables, and, you know, in some ways that is his superpower being able to, as, as we all know, you know, go off schedule and make some plays. How can you say about uh, ABT and what he was able to do and what's next for him? ABT is um, – what he just did, uh, again, I, I know Dwayne said it. I listened to that. And um, it, a lot of people don't understand how hard it is to – he's only in his second year too. You know, ABT kind of carries himself like he's been in this league for five years already. And I felt that way a year ago. But, I mean, he's still in, in the infancy of this thing. And, um, you know, so for him to be able to, to, to do that and, and just the selfless act of it, you know, uh, he's been having um, – you know, in, in, in some regards, a really good season at right guard and just to to not flinch when we asked him, you know, hey, can, can we move you over to left tackle? We're not going to force you to do anything that you're not comfortable with. We got enough guys on this roster. That's why they're on this roster. Uh, but we felt like it was the best thing to do in that situation and for him to just kind of look at us like, yeah, I'll do whatever you guys want. I'll do whatever it takes for the team. I think it just says so much about the guys that uh, Joe D and, every, and, and, and his staff are bringing in here. Um, I can't say enough good things about him, and, and again, he'll he'll play center if he needs to. I'm, I'm sure, you know, if he starts playing center, he's going to want some goal line reps at fullback to at least tote the ball, uh, you know. But he'll do whatever's asked at him uh, at, at all times. What have you seen from Brees uh, these past couple of weeks? Yeah, he's just he's uh, he's he said uh, after the game to me in the in the. Uh, in the locker room, he goes, I'm, I'm figuring it out more and more. And, and I think we can all see what he meant by that, you know. And he's a very smart guy. He, he's very, very smart. And so you can tell him something once. Um, I, don't even, I, I, don't, I don't want to um, <laughs> overuse how smart he is because, uh, you know, I just, want, I, I just want him to go out and play his game and play fast. But uh, he's learning. He's learning every week. He learns within the drive. He learns within the run what needed to get done. He can tell Taylor Embry, the running back coach, you know, what he did wrong or what he did right, you know. So uh, he's continuing to grow. He's got a long way to go, as, as, as we all do. But, uh, you know, he's, um, he's on the right track. What's your potential when he does – Figure out even more. I mean, from New York, see what his physical skills. Yeah, I mean, I think that's for you guys to kind of, you know, uh, write about and all that. And and I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, but I don't want to put any uh, undue pressure on him or anything like that. I just know uh, he cares about this game. He's very talented. Uh, he's very smart, and um, he's going to do whatever it takes to win. You know, and so he's a guy that you know. Thank God he's here. What's your best uh, Mike McDaniel story? <laughs> um, 
God, you're putting me on the spot right now. Usually, I don't feel like I get on the spot. Uh, I, I don't, I don't got much. I mean, it's um, he, he's. Uh, you guys have seen him in, in the press conferences and all that. You guys have gotten to know him just by by seeing it from afar, going all the way back to his interview process in terms of uh, you know what was or when when he first got hired. He's a he's a great great man. You know, it's it's obviously well documented how uh, how smart of a coach he is. But now he's getting to show how good of a leader he is. We all knew that in San Francisco. Anyone in Atlanta knew it. Uh, guys in Cleveland knew it. Miles Austin, um, you know, and, and and all those other guys. But now he's uh, you know able to get up there in front of the team, uh, be the leader that he always knew he was. Um, great person, uh, great family man, uh, his wife, Katie and, uh, his daughter, Ayla are absolutely beautiful. And, um, you know, he's one of my best buddies, you know, so outside of this Sunday and obviously one more Sunday, you know, you wish him all, all the best, but, uh, uh, you know, this week is, is about the Jets and, and, you know, the Dolphins. Do you, watch defense, but do you see his offense? Do you see a lot of what you guys did together? Yeah, for sure. You know, you uh, using it to to his personnel. Uh, you know that he has there. Obviously, uh, when you look at the freshest ones right now, are us, San Francisco, and Miami, and all are a little bit different for obvious reasons. We all got different personnel, um, but uh, he's his game in Green Bay or the uh, and San Francisco are the three games that I'll watch every Monday uh, after we get done. You know, reviewing ours before I start on to the next opponent. So I've seen every one of their snaps, um, doing a lot of impressive stuff. Um, you know, just being. And obviously, four weeks into this thing, they got, you know, the, the talent is very clear. It's, um, I think, the fastest team I've ever seen uh, on offense. It, it, it's incredible the amount of space they get uh, from the speed, and, uh, you know, and, and he's using it. Mike, the defense, the Dolphins, they, they like the blitz, they like the chances. Are there opportunities for big plays for you guys? Yeah, anytime. You know, I mean, they they, they know what they're susceptible to when the, when they're bringing the pressure, but they have they have a, a lot of trust in their guys, obviously, to, to get that job done, and it's something that they have done uh, for a lot of years now. You know, it's again, it it, it feels like. Uh, Cincinnati in a way, somewhat Cleveland, uh, in terms of they've, they've been in this system uh, for, you know, a, a few years now, three, four years, whatever it's been, I think th- uh, four years. And, uh, you know, they're just they're just getting really, really good at it. I thought they were really good last year, particularly in that back half of the year. They made the philosophical change uh, kind of in that Baltimore game in week seven, eight, whatever it was, and it carried through, and they won a lot of games, and uh, you can see the confidence they got. They're just going to continue to get better. Um, it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a great challenge for our guys, and, uh, you know, I know they're up for it. Mike, as you um, are coming off a couple of kind of heart-stopping wins uh, in the last few, few weeks, um, when you look at this game on Sunday, how much is this, in your in your mind, a, in a bigger picture, a swing game or a moment, momentum game for you guys uh, just because of – trying to keep this program going that way. Yeah, no, I mean, it's I don't want to sound cliché, but I truly and in my heart, you get in Monday, you, the, the emotions of, of the Sunday game are away and you're trying to be one and oh every single week, you know. So, um, you know, I know I you know, I, I know for the fan base and all that, it, it we want to win every game, you know, so um, we want to continue to go up no matter what. And are there going to be setbacks along the way? Yeah, that's why there's only been one undefeated team throughout the history of football, you know, in terms of uh, uh, with the, what the Dolphins did way back when. Um, so, uh, you know, to answer your question, we're just trying to be 1-0 this week. Um, I know our guys have that same mindset. Um, we got a huge challenge in front of us. Uh, it is a division game, um, you know, and, uh, you know, it's, again, our guys are going to have to put their best foot forward.